Hello everyone, Mr. Fawcett here, and we are back with another geometry lesson. Today we're going to talk about three more shortcuts for proving triangles congruent. So in our last lesson we talked about SAS congruence as well as SSS or triple S, and today we've got three new ones lined up. Before we get there though, a couple of warm-up questions. Pause the video and try to complete questions one and two, and then join me back for a discussion. All right, so first question, it says, what are sides AC and BC called? What about side AB? Well, let's take a look at the type of triangle. We have a right angle, so that's going to make it a right triangle. Um, well, AC and BC, those are going to be my legs. And side AB, right, the side opposite the right angle and the longest side of a right triangle is going to be our hypotenuse. Number two says, given two triangles, DEF and GHI, if angle D is congruent to angle G and angle E is congruent to angle H, well, why is angle F going to be congruent to angle I? Now, we don't know these triangles are congruent. Right? It doesn't give us a congruent symbol between the two triangles. It just says given these two. So we have to have another reason for why those uh, other angles are congruent. However, we are told that two sets of angles are congruent. And if two sets of angles are congruent, those third set of angles has to be congruent by the third angles theorem. All right, let's jump into our first shortcut today. We're not going to prove these shortcuts today. Uh, we're going to keep the video a little bit short. Uh, we are going to apply them, though, to triangle proofs. So ASA congruent says if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So this is like SAS, where the angle had to be in between the sides, but now we're ASA and the side has to be between the angles. So if we know that two triangles from two tri sorry, if we know that two angles from two triangles are congruent and the side in between them is congruent to the other side from the other triangle in between the angles, then we know that the triangles themselves are congruent. AAS congruence, our next shortcut is very similar to ASA, right? It, it's it comes from it. So essentially, if I have a diagram here, Right? And I have two angles and a side from each triangle that are congruent. Right? So I have triangle ABC and I have triangle DEF. Well, this isn't ASA, but what about those third angles? Right? Can't we just say that these angles up here have to be congruent to one another by the third angles theorem? We just talked about that uh, up above. And abbreviate angles, third angles theorem. And if we know that those two angles have to be congruent, well, now we do have ASA, right? Now we do have uh, two angles and a side that's in between the angles, all being congruent uh, to two angles and the side in between the angles from the other triangle. So again, ASA and AAS are related um, because if we have AAS, right, we could always show that it becomes ASA. And if we know ASA works, well, then AAS has to work. Uh, so the theorem here, well, AAS is just an extension of ASA. And our theorem here, if two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding angles and the non-included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So very close to one another. The only difference is that for one of these theorems, the side is outside of the angles, and for the other theorem, the side is included. And it's just based on how the letters are written. All right, I before I get to our last shortcut, I want to go over a proof using ASA or AAS. So take a look at proof number one. I'm going to let you guys read the given, read the proof, and try to fill in the statements, and then we will discuss together. All right, so it says angle K is congruent to angle M. Uh, those are marked with arcs in our diagram. And it says line KL is parallel to line NM. 
and those are marked with the arrows on our diagram showing that those are parallel. And we want to prove that triangle KNL, we'll outline that in blue, KNL is congruent to MLN. We'll do that one in red. So the first thing I think is pretty obvious, it's given. And notice that I have one set of angles here. So I'm just going to throw a little A just to keep track. It then says that angle MNL, MNL, that's this angle right here in red, is congruent to angle KLN up here in blue. Well, what's the reason for the, what's a reason for why those two angles could be congruent? And remember, we can only use what we've been given. Well, they're not vertical. Um, they're not a linear pair. We are told that there's some parallel lines, though, which opens up a wide selection of different angle choices for us, right? Here's our parallel lines. We'll do those. Well, that was poor. Let's try that again. Here's our parallel lines in pink. Right? And if I draw this transversal, I'll do that in pink as well. Right, Those two angles are on opposite sides of the transversal, and they're on the inside of the parallel lines. So this is the alternate interior angles theorem. That is why those two angles are congruent. All right, I'm going to get rid of all that. I am also going to put a little a because we found another set of angles that are congruent. Then it says segment NL is congruent to segment NL. Well, that's the shared segment from both triangles or the shared side. And of course, that's going to be the reflexive property. Something is always going to be equal to itself or congruent in this case. Uh, so reflexive property of congruence. This is a little less. So now I have two angles and one set of sides. Uh, the problem is I just need to know whether this was ASA or AAS, right? Because both of them use two angles and one side. So let's take a look at our diagram. Is that side with the black tick mark in between the angles from each triangle or is it outside? And it's clearly outside, right? Uh, KL would be the side in between for the blue triangle and NM would be the side in between for the red triangle. So this is going to be AAS because the side is not in between the angles. All right, uh, you know what? Let's do one more dealing with AAS or ASA. Go do number two. Again, uh, read the given on your own. Look at the diagram, read what you're supposed to prove, and then see how many of the statements you can fill in. All right, so it says segment BC is congruent to segment DC. Those are both marked with one tick mark on our diagram. And it says line AB is parallel to line DE, and those are marked with arrows. So again, we're just trying to prove that the two triangles are congruent. I'm going to label them with, or outline them rather. Uh, triangle ABC we'll do in red. And triangle EDC we'll do in blue. All right, so the first one's given, right? That's the information that they stated. And in our given information, we have one set of sides. All right, next one is angle CAB is congruent to angle CED. So CAB, this angle right here, congruent to CED. All right. Well, again, let's think about the reasoning. Um, again, we're going to use this parallel line piece of given information up here. So AB parallel to DE. Those angles are both inside the parallel lines. And they're on opposite sides of this transversal. Right, on opposite sides. So we again have alternate interior angles theorem. And I have a little a. 
All right, next one is at angle BCA. I'm going to mark that in. Oops, I need to get rid of this little pink. All right, angle BCA, do two arcs, is congruent to angle DCE. Also two arcs. Well, uh, if we know our angles, we know that those are vertical angles. So the vertical angle theorem. Vertical angles theorem. And that's also a little a. Well, again, I have two sets of angles and one set of sides. Um, it may be a little, we may have blocked those little tick marks, but the tick marks are right here. So again, is that side in between the angles or is it outside of the angles? Well, uh, it's not between, right? Because that would be side AC and side CE. So if it's outside, we're again going to use AAS congruence. Okay, uh, let's go back and look at our third shortcut for the day, third and final shortcut, HL congruence. All right, so we come up here. HL congruence stands for a hypotenuse leg congruence. That's what the H and the L stand for, hypotenuse leg. So essentially, this theorem states that if two right triangles have a corresponding hypotenuse and leg that are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. So we have to have right triangles, that's a key, and we have to have a set of hypotenuses that are congruent and a set of legs that are congruent. So let's think about why that's good enough. Why is it good enough just to know that uh, if we have a right triangle, if the hypotenuse is congruent and uh, the leg is congruent to a hypotenuse and a leg from another right triangle, then the whole triangles have to be congruent. Well, what else do we know about right triangles? Take a minute to think, is there any other theorems we know about right triangles? Well, we know the Pythagorean theorem, right? We know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a uh, and b are legs and c is the hypotenuse. So you could think about it, right? If I knew what a and c were, well, I could always figure out what b is. Right, if A, let's say A is 3, we'll make this easy. C is 5. Well, I'm going to get 9 plus B squared equals 25. I'm going to get B squared is equal to 16. I'm going to get B is equal to 4. Right, if I have another right triangle where a hypotenuse and a leg are 3 and 5, and even if I switch the three for the B, right? Even if I write that as the other leg, I'm still going to get that my other leg is equal to four, right? And if I know that all three sides are equal, right, in length, that means all three sides are congruent. Well, if all three sides are congruent, we know that those triangles are congruent by SSS. So hypotenuse leg congruence essentially gives us enough information that we could eventually get to SSS congruence if we wanted to, right? We don't have to show all that extra work, um, but here's, here's what it would be, right? If I know that I have a right triangle and a hypotenuse and a leg that are congruent to another right triangle's hypotenuse and leg, then those triangles have to be congruent because the other legs have to be the same measurement based on the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Uh, the other question is, well, what if I just knew that both legs were congruent, right? What if I just knew, is there a leg-leg uh, congruence for right triangles? Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at that. Say I have two right triangles, their legs are congruent, Well, aren't those two triangles actually already congruent by another shortcut, right? We don't have to come up with another short. We don't have to come up with, 
you know, a new name like leg leg congruence, because there's already a shortcut that works for these two triangles, right? Take 15 seconds to think about what it is. Well, both of these triangles share two sides and an included angle that are both congruent, right? The right angles are congruent. So that counts as a congruent angle. So this would just be SAS congruence. So then it would just be SAS congruence. So HL, uh, we only use that when we're talking about the hypotenuse of one triangle and a leg of one triangle being congruent to a hypotenuse and a leg from another triangle. I'll show you the little box with the theorem in it just to sum things up. So if the hypotenuse and a leg of a right triangle are congruent to a hypotenuse and a leg of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Let's go apply this. Let's apply this to a proof. Let's do, let's do number three. Short proof. Uh, it says, actually, I'm going to let you guys uh, think about it because I think you could fill in all three boxes at this point. So take a few minutes. All right, so it says angle V and angle Y are right angles. So those are marked in the diagram with little boxes. And we know that side WV is congruent to side XY. Those are both marked with tick marks. We need to prove that triangle WVX, let's do that in red, is congruent to, to triangle XYW. Oops, that was poor. X, Y, W, that's a little better. So those triangles overlap, uh, maybe makes it a little bit, maybe it makes it a little bit harder to uh, picture those, but I think different colors should help. Uh, I'm gonna put a little S here. Okay, because I've proved that a side is congruent. And you know what, because we're talking about right triangles, you could also think of that as either an L or an H, right? Are those two sides legs or are they hypotenuses? Well, it's probably good to know that these are legs, right? They're not the sides across from the right angle. Uh, this information was all given. The next statement is missing. They give us the reason. They say the reason is a reflexive property of congruence. Now, are there any two sides here or are there any two sides that are the same side, essentially? Do the triangles share a side? Well, they do share this side down here, WX. So we can say segment WX is congruent to segment WX by the reflexive property of congruence. Well, this is another side, but we're dealing with right triangles. So we want to know whether it's a leg or hypotenuse. Well, notice that this side is across from both right angles, which makes it the hypotenuse of both right triangles. Which means we have enough to prove the triangles congruent. We have one set of legs, one set of hypotenuses, and we know the triangles are right triangles because we know that they have a right angle. So this shortcut to prove them congruent would be HL, and we are done. All right, so we're going to stop the video here. Uh, you're now saddled with three new shortcuts that you can add to your toolbox for proving right triangles congruent. You just need to make sure you're using the right one, right? So keep track of those letters, know how many sets of angles, how many sets of sides that you've proved congruent so that you choose the right shortcut. Uh, again, that's going to end it for today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you next time.